Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. I'm recording this episode in a time of great upheaval. Of course, uh, 0 0.90 has uh, come out, it's beta, KSP beta for the first time. And uh, not only that, I'm uh, caught up in quite a lot of other things, including the fact that I'm going to be going on vacation soon. In fact, this episode will probably be released while I am on vacation well away from my computer and well away from my ability to play KSP even though I would eagerly like to play in beta quite a lot and uh, but not only that uh, I, I got Elite Dangerous and so I'm gonna be away from my computer unable to play that as well and uh, I I don't know if I'm gonna be recording videos in that but uh, it's very different from KSP and most comfortable recording videos in this game but uh, yeah, that's another thing. So everything gets released right when I'm going to be going on vacation for like two weeks. Uh, go figure. So, but anyway, I, I, I'm going to have uh, videos released while I'm on vacation. I pre-recorded all of them and uh, so that will happen. I even pre-recorded a few uh, beta videos uh, hurriedly. So yeah, but uh, that is the situation. And really, because I've got all this going on, I, all I want to do is get our missions into safe orbits around Duna. I think that would be a good goal for this episode. And so we've got the Duna station. It's got a maneuver in 48 days and then eventual encounter with Duna in 79. Uh, that's the... okay. Uh, this one also has a maneuver in 48 days, but it arrives in 74. Now let's compare the times on those. Somebody mentioned using Kerbal Alarm Clock. And yes, it's a very useful mod, but I I would like to be able to keep these things in my head. And if I can't keep them in my head and, you know, check them out here, then uh, then something is wrong. So the first thing we need to do is the half move, and it will arrive first. The second thing we need to do is the maneuver for the Duna Station. It will arrive last. And the third thing we need to do is the maneuver for the CRT and then it will be the middle arrival okay so the half move first so here we are and it is just a matter of a bunch of time warping so as far as upgrading this to uh, 0 0.90 that that will take some some doing because this is a career mode you know that I, I accidentally crossed the SOI boundary at full tilt didn't I? Let's see if that changed anything. Because this is a career mode thing and career mode has changed quite a lot, I'll have to take a look at the save files in order to, well I'll have to adjust that maneuver too. No, it's it's actually fine. Yeah, I'll have to uh, take a look at the save file, the persistent file, in order to see how much has changed and what I need to add or subtract. So far it looks like the mods have been updating quite quickly. So that's a good thing. Of course, it doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned. They have two weeks to update uh, minimum because I'm going to be off and away. So, yep, uh, I won't be able to do anything about the mods un and upgrading until 2015, no matter what. So, can you tell that I'm upset about this fact? <laughs> uh, oh, well. But, uh, you know. So family obligations oh, 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 hold on wow electric charge just caught me out and I don't have any Kerbals that would be able to do anything ah okay look at that um, well we've got the little advanced Sun thing okay so how about Sun let's see that I think the solar panels are side facing right yeah so that'll do. Better take it from this view just to make sure that it remains sunlit. Okay, that should be close enough. Let's turn to maneuver node. Well, I'll change back to inertial for now. make sure everything is still what I planned it to be. 1,272 kilometers is quite alright in terms of getting close to Duna. We seem to be a bit off from where our maneuver node should have been. 
Probably because I time warped through the thing, but the effect shouldn't be too much different. Oh, no it's not. Hmm. Okay, let me replot. Okay, we're getting an Ike encounter, clearly. So I want to go higher than the Ike encounter, just because I don't want to actually bother with Ike this time. We are trying to definitely get into Duna orbit. 1,449 kilometers is fine, I suppose. Okay, let's just do this burn here. Okay, there we go. Duna periapsis, 177 kilometers is excellent. Okay, so next mission. And here's Duna Station 1, the mission that started it all. And I want to point out the maneuver node and we've got six days left until we have to do this part how's our electric charge oh we got tons and tons of electric charge here thanks part primarily to the actual uh, curvitat there probably let's see yeah 10,000 electric charge there okay uh, yep not much to say except let's go for it probably shouldn't have gone with red lighting on this. Of course I went with red lighting because of Duna, but it doesn't look quite right. Okay, that's the minimum, uh, about uh, 527 kilometers. Okay, that uh, mission is set, and now the CRT. Okay, here we are with the crew rescue and transfer vehicle. It occurs to me that we we weren't able to extend solar panels because I haven't uh, dumped this stage yet. So I don't know how electric charge is held out. I guess because it doesn't draw electric charge while I'm not around. But we'll have to be careful about that because I'm around now. Hmm. Turn the lights off. There's no drain. Oh, there's no drain. Why is there no drain? This is actually a tiny bit of drain here, it just doesn't show it here. Um, I think just for conservation's sake, we'll turn the lights off. Doesn't make any difference in terms of electric charge draw, oddly. I'm just taking a quick look at our light support monitoring just to make sure everybody's okay. The Curvitat's the one that uh, needs the eye out, but uh, we'll be at Duna before they're in, well, he's in any trouble. And we've already got the extra supplies close by to him. He's got about 75 more days. Okay, so node. Now oh, that took some electric charge. Do I have a panel out somewhere? No, I'm just not noticing. Just one of those always out panels. Let me just roll it for a sec here. I've got a thermometer on that side. And an antenna there. Surprised I didn't see fit to slap on a solar panel on the top there. Okay, well. Seems like a problem. What can we do? I could jettison one of the fairings. And now I can extend a solar panel. Or two. Okay, here we go for this correction. Well, wait a minute. This correction looks like it needs to be corrected. I don't even see any encounter there. Okay, well, this adjustment will bring us in nicely. 28.7 meters per second for a 127 kilometer approach. Okay, doing a periapsis. 40 kilometers going lower probably ends up a crash course. Okay, that is fine. Let's just orient this in relation to the sun for now. I'll have to remember to fix that, otherwise I'm going to be totally weird because of the reference frame. But yeah, let's execute. Okay, very good. Now, let's check back to the Space Center because the the initial approaches aren't exactly what I 
had planned. Let me see which mission is actually getting in first, second, and third. Okay, so Duna Station 1 in 31 days. Is, uh, we'll go by the periapsis. 31 days, 10 hours. Uh, 26 days, 12 hours for CRT. And the half moo in 18 days. So a very nice gap between them. Many days between them. So no problem uh, handling each one in turn. Half moo first. Okay, well, game crashed when I initially changed to the half moo, but uh, all is well now. So no problems. And, uh, yep, just want to make sure that everything remains okay. We seem pretty close to prograde, so I'm just going to turn to prograde. Looks like the sun will be in a fine position to recharge our batteries. But I'll have to keep an eye on that. We're not too far off. We're only, uh, what is it, 18 days. Okay, here we go. Into Duna Sphere of Influence. Now, the thing with the Half Moo is that we're going to be testing out the whole error breaking thing. It's the only unmanned mission, and so it's great that it's the first thing to enter the Duna Sphere of Influence and all that. I've got this weird stuttering. Uh, it uh, advances every 15 hours, then stops. It's not exactly 15 hours, though. It's some number, it's some definite number that it advances and then stops, which means it must be some sort of script that runs at that interval. Now I'm going to uh, take a peek at error breaking calculator to see when where I should error break. Now that's not the big problem. The big problem is steady re-entry, but we'll see that this is what we're testing. Okay, error breaking calculator gives 11,247, which sounds about right. On the other hand, we've got firmware space and maybe we're not quite as... I don't know, we're pretty much a blunt object. So I think the normal drag calculation should be about right. Uh, we are not uh, space plane by any stretch of the imagination. It is important to get at least the station and the half moo in relatively close orbits to each other. We don't want them to be in weird inclinations in relation to each other, otherwise it'll be tough to go back and forth. Which I would expect the CRT to do. The CRT might need to do some of that. I think aiming a little bit higher will be safer. It just means that we're going to have a higher apoapsis, and I prefer to be safer rather than have the thing explode. I think 12,670 sounds fine. That's about uh, a little bit more than a kilometer higher than than KSP air breaking calculator suggests. But we've got the delta V to retro burn if necessary. Oh, got to take off time warp here. I think I want it a little bit higher than that. But the inclination we could probably reduce more. Hmm. So if I just, uh, yeah, let's just, right, there we go. I'll adjust periapsis after the fact, but let's get inclination as close to zero as possible. Wow, we were getting a lot closer to zero than I thought we would be. It was a pretty good uh, approach. 1.3 seems like the minimum. And now I want to go plus radial. And that will allow us to adjust our periapsis without affecting incl inclination too much. And I'll do that with RCS. Alright, I'm getting satisfied with that. Okay, retrograde. So here's the test. Let's find out what happens. And whether this thing can air break without overheating. No heat shield, right? There's just a procedural fuel tank. And hitting the atmosphere momentarily here. That's the atmosphere. Let's keep an eye on our temperatures. I don't remember when the last time I tried deadly reentry with stock Duna was. Then again, I don't remember very much about my missions anyway. Uh, too so many of them, it gets all mixed up eventually. I don't know if this is the part that's going to have the highest heating. 
But looks pretty hot to me. Let's check the others right here. That's mild. That's that's the hottest. The Rocket Max 2477s were the hottest past a thousand. But safe, we are going up again. We're not in orbit though. But that's because I was intentionally trying to be higher than air braking calculator suggested. I had aimed in air braking calculator. It said the eleven thousand two hundred for uh, apoapsis of five hundred. So anyway, it's okay. Let's retro burn for the rest of the difference. We're still, of course, in the atmosphere. Maybe I should wait a little bit. Be somewhat patient about it. But it looks like uh, for the other missions, I can go down to uh, 12,500 and still be all right. And so they'll also go down to 12,500 air brake to that extent and then do the rest with their thrusters. Obviously better to start out trying to retro burn earlier because this thing has quite a long stage. It takes 13 minutes to expend its delta V, so it would take a while. Now, taking a look at the sites they've picked out for us for potential missions, we've got this, there's a rover site there, and then there's these other sites. I don't think a single rover would be able to co cover all of these, but these are flyovers, so nor would a single plane be able to take care of it. Oh, all the rover sites are actually pretty close together. It's actually a lot of rover sites there, is it? Yeah, there's Alpha, Beta, Delta. Okay, so yeah, a single rover would definitely be able to cover those. That's a good thing. And then we'll have to have something fly over these. Possibly it'll be the CRT that flies over instead of uh, instead of an actual space plane. Okay, in orbit. Took a bit of Delta V, but we got it. I'm not going to pull it all the way down just yet because we're so far away from periapsis. Okay, six hours is fine. Doesn't look like there's any Ike encounter involved, so... Looks safe. Alright, let's go around up to apoapsis. Electric charge... not quite holding out, hold on. Oh, well, we're, uh, we're on the dark side of Duna, that's why. So we're not going to get any sunlight anyway. Alright, and boosting periapsis. We have lights on this thing? Well, sort of. Docking lights. Not really helpful here. We can adjust the orbit further and get higher up if necessary. Actually, maybe I'll keep my apoapsis end higher. It won't be a circular orbit. Probably better that way. That allow for more flexible um, mission. I mean, for the CRT in particular to get to it uh, in a more flexible manner. So if the CRT ends up in a low orbit or high orbit, they'll be able to adjust only one end. Okay, uh, 158 by 58. It's a elongated orbit, eccentric orbit, but that uh, if you're coming back up from the ground, it probably would be easier to meet up with it in this case. You'll end up with a ten hopefully, we'll end up with a tangency on one side. You'll set your orbit to like 58 by 58, and you'll be touching on this side, but uh, you'll be able to catch up with it if necessary on the other side. Something like that. Okay. I think I'm happy with this. Let's open it for business. We won't turn on the lights just yet though. Better not to have the lights on until we're sure we need them. Okay, so next mission, the CRT. Alright, here we are with the CRT. Uh, that is Crew Rescue and Transfer, not Cathode Ray Tube, of course. And with Jed and Kerman here, ready to go and uh, just a few days away from Duna Encounters, so let's let's head in there. Okay, well this is quite a more extreme orbit than we had with the half moon. This is a 99 degree inclination, but we can fix that, we can fix that. 
Oop, wrong way. So do 45 degrees with the inclination tool, 45 degrees, uh-oh. What's this all about? I can counter, uh-oh. Uh, all right, well, we're unavoidably going to have an Ike encounter, it looks like. Well, nothing for it. Uh, we'll pass through the Ike encounter and hopefully it won't do too much to us. It looks like a pretty high encounter. So let me do this burn first before checking error breaking calculator. Well, I'm not going to check error breaking calculator. I'm going to go for 12,500 and do the uh, whatever retro burns we need to do after that because we, we need to keep safe from the heating. And that's about as much as I dare to dare to risk. Okay, so uh, two hours until the burn point. Yeah, I have to go back to inertial frame instead of sun reference. And I think we're okay to go for the burn. Okay. Right. Let's get through the whole Ike thing. Well, this is 1.3 before Ike. It's actually 40... I mean, well, it's 1.3 inclination before Ike, and it's also uh, 23 kilometer periapsis before Ike. Uh, our periapsis ends up being 45 after Ike, but that's fine. We still need to do fine adjustments to it. Okay, here we go. Let's see what Ike's going to do to us. The Troll Moon par excellence. We are within Ike's sphere of influence. Have we done Ike science yet? Probably have. What do you say, Jaden? Let's see. Crew report? Oh, we haven't done a crew report. I think we're okay on electric charge, so let's just transmit this. Okay, well done. If we haven't done a crew report, maybe we haven't done a EVA. This is a little bit dodgier, though. Okay, well, uh, EVA. Slide down so that you don't fall off. EVA report. Ah, nothing. Okay, well, we have done EVA. Also, note fully deploy parachute, semi deploy parachute. That's uh, VNG parachutes installed after the loss of Jebediah Kerman, obviously. So, uh, we will not have that sort of thing happening again. Of course, uh, one time is more than enough. Okay, we continue. Okie dokie. Retrograde. We'll get a little bit closer before react retracting the two solar panels we've got there. Hopefully the open part of the fairing won't uh, cause any damage to the stuff inside due to heating. I'll try and roll such that the reentry heat does not get in there. Now this mission is actually entering slower than the previous mission. Of course we got here later so that makes sense. And so maybe going 12,500 kilometers will be closer to orbit. I hope it's not too too low. I don't think so. I don't. In previous experience, 12,500 has not been too low. Check out the... Oh, the RCS ports are a little bit hot there. About the same as the Poodle, though. What about these fairings? The fairings are pretty hot, too. Head it back up. We're still not in orbit yet. I think we need to retro burn now. Okay, we are in orbit. Still in the atmosphere, so it's bringing us down still. I'm not going to retro burn anymore until it's finished doing that. Jiren has a good look at Ike over Duna here. Okay, six hour orbit again, well, close to it anyway. Coasting out to apoapsis so I can push my periapsis up to something stable. In this case, uh, let's go 80. 
80 kilometers and we'll circularize that. Yeah, it's okay. This thing is not going to be staying in orbit anyway. The important thing is that, you know, it has some sort of decent look to it. And eventually we might have to uh, tilt it up to some high inclinations to hit these guys. For now it's alright. I'm not uh, as picky about those things as others might be. Maybe I should put it into a high inclination right away. Maybe when it comes around, well, I'm going to have this uh, this tank hang out with it, even though it's not part of the actual CRT, uh, because it can put us into that high inclination to hit those targets. Maybe that'll be alright. I'll have to take a look at the specifics of the contracts in order to figure out whether what what exactly I should do with those and how high I need to be. I think we have to be pretty darn low, though. Yeah. Okay, but uh, first things first, let's turn to turn to the station, which will fulfill the huge contract that we have and bring us quite a lot of science and funds. All right, well, here is the key part, the difficult part, but the most lucrative part in terms of funds and science. Um, obviously, we'll have to retract the docking, uh, not the docking ring, the habitation ring before re-entry. That would be bad if we tried to re-enter with that out. But otherwise uh, I don't foresee anything going wrong, but that just that's how it usually happens when things go wrong. When things go wrong you're not really going to foresee it necessarily. So here we go, four days before the encounter. Okay, here we are. Very similar approach to the CRT approach. I think we're close enough to the maneuver node to go for it. Let's uh, make sure Smart ESS doesn't wander. Okay, um, yeah, let's correct that. What's our inertial reference? Okay. Okay, well, it's about the minimum. Okay, so. Periapsis is a little bit high. This must be quite a ride for the guys inside. Well, they look happy. They've had uh, probably months of boredom, so I guess that's fair enough. Yep, too far, but RCS should cover that. Let's go a little bit higher, because, well, we've got a lot of Kerbals on board here. Okay, retrograde. You know, our supplies are alright, but I don't like this whole having a lot of waste. I know it's not going to kill them, they'll just throw it overboard, but... Um, I, I really do need to send over a waste disposal vehicle. I don't like them littering space with their um, stuff. So that might be a thing. It, it, it's not going to be very glorious work for the Kerbal involved uh, in terms of picking up, picking up everybody else's icky stuff. But uh, he'll be able to convert it to useful stuff. I think we'll put some of the converter units on board that uh, particular vehicle and so it'll be a, just a waste conversion vehicle. I, I foresee that. I think that is the thing we need. We're gonna have quite a lot of waste resources here so plenty of material to use for such things. And in that case uh, I, I believe they cost funds right? All these uh, food, water, and oxygen, it costs funds. So, as if we can convert it, that'll probably save us some money. Now, I wonder if some of these things sticking out are gonna cause problems with daily re-entry. We are higher, and we're going in slower, so those are two factors in our favor, but this is a much more complicated vehicle altogether. We've got these solar panels outside here. 
Are they all happy? Let me just make sure nobody thinks that things are going wrong. Okay. Looks like they're all good. Wow, even the struts? Wow. Hmm. These aren't any problem. How about the solar panels? Solar panels are cool. And we're at periapsis. Okay. Heating looks to have been safe. Now we need to actually get into orbit. Okay, retro burned into orbit, and I'm gonna let it pull my orbit down. Let Duna do so. Is our contract fulfilled yet? Uh, achieve orbit around Duna. Well, no, that's not the same contract. Put your station in orbit. Duna neutralized controls. Okay, well, we haven't. No, I don't think we have neutralized controls, but uh, it should be reading that we're in orbit. Oh, well, a periapsis was so low, it's probably suborbital. Gotta keep this high at 200. Let's coast to the apoapsis and then bring our periapsis up. Prograde vector. Well, we'll wait until we're fully in orbit to before deploying the habitation ring. All right, that is a pretty good orbit. Ah, and now it reads it's in orbit. Okay, so we need to neutralize controls. How's that for neutralizing? Uh, wait 10 seconds. Okay, we got it. Neutralize control, that's fulfilled. We got a little message. How much do we get? 375,000 funds, 500 science, 375 reputation. This is a bonanza. Let's see, uh, d does it show us our resources? Oh, okay, good. Lots of stuff here. Now, habitation ring. Deploy. This is the wrong camera. Let's get a look at this in orbit around Duna in daylight. All right, there we are. There you have it. Does Duna look a little bit bloated? No, anyway. Uh, yes, we have a station in orbit around Duna. It has six kerbals in. There's one in the docking ring that doesn't get shown here. But uh, yeah, six kerbals. We've got plenty of supplies for them. We've got a vehicle for them to reach the surface on if necessary. And we've got missions to do so. We've got an extra fuel depot in orbit around Duna in order to refuel the CRT. I think we're pretty good to go as far as uh, initial efforts to get assets around Duna. Everything successful, lots of science. We'll have to take a look at what I can do with uh, deploying that science in the next episode. I'll take a look at the tech tree then. And of course, plenty of funds to uh, continue our efforts in Duna. Basically fulfilling these contracts will ensure that we can continue operations here in addition to our existing operations around the moon and on the moon. All right, with all that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.